What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Cruz. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use flat.io. That's F-L-A-T dot I-O. A link is in the description below. Flat.io is um, free music notation software. Um, what you do is you put your music into the computer and print it out and you don't have to worry about um, smudges, broken lead, or dull pencil lead. Um, this is all online. You don't have to worry about handwriting notes and making everything nice and neat. So instead of that, everything is on flat.io. Um, so anyways, you're going to go to flat.io and register. If you're looking at my computer screen, you're noticing that the URL is different or maybe it says something else up here. I have the teacher's edition. Don't worry about that. Just go to flat.io and register any email account will do um, so let's get started once you've signed in you should you're, you're supposed to look for um, a button that says new score or tab um, if you don't see that it can be either here in the middle or over here on the right side if you don't see new score or tab go to my library click on it And then you should see new score or tab right here in the middle or over here on the right side of your browser. Okay, so let's click on new score or tab. For this assignment, you're going to um, title it with your name. So I'm going to do that. Okay, there's my name. Uh, and use your name for the title of your new song or score. Click on continue. Afterwards, this is where you put the instruments that you want to edit. Okay, so since this is just for violas, <clears throat> we're going to scroll down to strings. And then to add viola, click on the plus sign or click on the instrument. And viola shows up here, meaning that you are going to be making parts for viola or be editing parts for viola. Uh, you can add other instruments if, let's say, you want to create an orchestra piece and you want to experiment, you know, you can add your other instruments by clicking on these instruments. Okay, so since I don't need these, I'm going to click these minus signs. <clears throat> okay, let's click on create. And now you are, well, it's still loading. Now you are in the main editor or main editing interface of flat.io and so let's talk about the features in flat.io you have your menu bar up here notes articulation ornament dynamic measure and text you have your menu up here um, and then for me I have these document buttons up in the upper right I noticed that like if I use my laptop um, and I have a smaller screen these document items are not here but rather they're right here next to notes okay so if you see me I'm clicking notes over here to the left of the notes should be the document tool tab or document menu okay so since my monitor is fairly wide um, my documents show up over here on the right so that's documents now I'm on if you click on the note tool menu okay this is where you edit if you want to add a sharp or a flat uh, you want to make it quarter notes, whole notes, your rhythmic values here, dotted rhythms, okay, triplets, and a whole bunch of other stuff that um, I'm not going to go over because we're not going to talk about the, those things in the video. All right, so that's your note selection tool. Here are your articulations such as staccato, accents, slurs, fermata, uh, what else, breath marks. Okay, we're going to be uh, throwing a couple of those things in. Um, our ornaments, we're not going to be talking about that, but if you need ornaments and other symbols on top of your notes, this is where you go. Dynamic, such as crescendo or diminuendo, or forte, piano, mezzo forte. Here are your measure tools. Okay, so this is um, where you add and remove measures, or if you want to add, a, uh, if you want, a measure to go to the next line like a paragraph indent this is where you change the clef time signature and time signature rehearsal letters and numbers 
repeat signs, bar lines, um, DCL codas, finés, first and second ending. And then the last part is text. This is if you want to write lyrics into the music or put chord symbols or specific um, musical instructions, annotations. All right, so that is the big editor window up here. Again, if you're not seeing document, that means your document tools are already displayed. Okay, um, the next most important thing that you need to remember um, in using flat.io is this teardrop cursor right here. If you're not aware of where the teardrop cursor is while you're editing your music in flat.io, Okay, you're going to be making changes in other spots that you're not aware of because you're not paying attention to the teardrop cursor here. So wherever this teardrop cursor is, wherever that teardrop cursor is, is where you're going to make changes in the music. Okay, and you'll notice that as I, as I walk you through this assignment, um, I'm going to be talking about that teardrop cursor frequently throughout this video. All right, uh, you should already have the viola tutorial pdf you're supposed to be able to view that or download or print it because you, what you're going to do is you're going to recreate all this music that's down here and put it into flat.io um so you'll notice up here i have this thing called workflow workflow is your organizational system or the order of how you're going to put all this music into flat.io okay and you want a workflow because if you just try to do everything all at once one note at a time uh it one it's going to take too long and two if you don't put a workflow then you're probably going to forget to put certain items into your music for example sometimes when i when i don't have a workflow i'll i'm going to be making music and then i'll forget that i'll forget to put dynamics in for, for example so um Workflow, it's kind of like a checklist, a reminder of things that you need to do when you write your um, when you write your manuscript or your music. All right, so we are here in the main editing interface and um, we have our PDF for our Viola students. We have our PDF of what you're going to put into flat.io. So let's get started. Uh, in the very beginning of every song, I like to make sure that I'm in the correct key signature and time signature okay so we need to change our key signature because our key signature at the very beginning is two sharps okay and you'll notice over here in flat.io we don't have any sharps and flats in the key signature all right so uh, we got to change that so how do we add a uh, a, a key signature to flat.io well, first, make sure that your cursor, the teardrop, is in the first measure because that's the measure we want to affect. Make sure the cursor is there. Then you're going to want to go to Measure Tools, okay, and then click on Key Signature. A window shows up, and you want to find the one that says two sharps because we're in the key of D major, so we need to put two sharps. Click that. And that's how your key signature gets changed. Okay. Another way to do a key signature change is to, it, I don't think it really matters where you are, um, which menu you're in, but make sure the uh, teardrop cursor is here. Click somewhere around here. And there we go. And the key signature dialog box shows up. Okay. So I'm going to click two sharps. All right, so now you know two ways to put in um, key signatures. Uh, the next thing is time signatures, okay? The next thing that you have to do is, is time signatures. It's kind of the same concept. You can click on the time signature. A menu appears of time signatures that you can switch to. Oops, try that again. There we go. The other way to do it, okay? The other way to do it is to go to your measure tools up here click on time signature and that same box shows up down below uh like below down here so if i want to change it there's a six eight time signature okay so i'm going to go back to measure time signature click on four four time because that's what we're going to play 
So that's key signature and time signature. Um, all right, moving on. The next thing we're going to lay down into flat.io is our, is our pitches. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to insert pitches into flat.io. Um, pitches and rhythm. Okay, and here we go. So first note is an eighth note D. An eighth note D. So I'm going to go to my note, to my, my note menu tools, click on eighth note. And then to insert the note into the staff, you can either click the note into the staff using your, your touchpad on your laptop or your mouse. Okay. Or you can type it in using your computer keyboard. All right. So let me erase that note. All right. If I want to play, if I want to put a D into the staff here in viola, I'll just press D on my computer keyboard. There you go. All right. Um, I prefer to, uh, I prefer to click the notes into the staff because I, I feel like I have a little bit more control. The problem with, um, the problem with typing the letters into the staff using your computer keyboard is, um, it could be good, but the bad part about it is sometimes you're typing it in and then the note appears in the wrong octave. It's like way too high. And so it's another process or another step. Um, several steps to undo that action okay and or to correct that note so I prefer just clicking the note into the staff all right so um, now we know how to insert notes and I'm, I'm mostly going to be clicking the note into the staff using my mouse all right so I could see here that this is just a D major scale okay because we have two sharps this is just a D major scale on the viola so I'm gonna click on notes click on eighth note and then click the notes in D, E, F sharp, G. Oops. All right. So I did not do that on purpose. I was make I made a mistake. So here's how to undo in flat.io. You're going to go to your document tools. It's either up already up here on the upper right, or click on document tools, which is next to note tools. All right, and you can click on undo. All right. I, um, and then I need to undo that note again because I, that's a mistake. So click, oops, click undo. All right, and there it goes. So this needs to be a G, right? Um, so when you undo, you can undo with your computer keyboard. That's for, so for Apple's or Macintosh computers, it's Command Z or Apple Z. If you use a Chromebook or a PC, it's Control Z. Okay, to undo. If you make a mistake, just immediately undo. All right, so we need to keep on clicking eighth notes in here. So D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then D. All right, so the F sharp and the C sharp, these are automatically sharped as I put them in because of the key signature. Had this key signature not been here, you would, you would have, this would sound an F natural and this would sound a C natural. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so let's keep clicking in more notes. This is just a D major scale descending here in measure two. <laughs> All right, so that is measures one and two. Okay, next is, you're probably noticing that there's this measure right here. There's an extra measure right here. But in the PDF, measure one and two are only in the first line, okay? So um, we need to move this measure to the next line, okay? So I set my blue teardrop cursor under anything under measure three, click on measure, and then find this icon right here called system break. Click on that. And measure three shows up in the second line. Okay, now why is it called a system break? Well, actually, in music, a system is a line in music. Okay, so for example, in this PDF, we have four systems. Okay, four systems. Um, we don't want to call them lines because we have so many lines already in music. We have measure line, bar line, ledger line, staff line. Okay, and if you just say line too much, it gets really confusing. So we have systems in music, but 
informally, I'm going to be calling them lines anyway. Uh, but anyway, so that's how you kick that measure, measure three, into the second line, okay, or the second system. So let's keep going. Next, we have several things happening here in measure three, okay. Um, we have a key signature change. We went from two sharps, now we're going to one sharp, okay. So let's fix that first. Click on measure tools, click on key signature, and find the key signature with one sharp. And there you go, measure three has changed to the key signature of one sharp. All right, now we can put notes in, okay? So next we have, uh, this is a G major scale, okay? So let's put those notes in. I'm gonna find that, I see that they're quarter notes, they're all quarter notes, so I'm gonna go to note, click on notes, click on quarter note, and I'm gonna start clicking in the notes for the G major scale. Okay, all quarter notes going down or descending. All right, so that's measure three, four, five, and six. Okay, and it looks like the number of measures adds up. One, two, three, four. All right, looking at measure seven. Okay, now we're gonna have some quarter notes and quarter rests. All right, so let's start clicking in these notes. Measure seven, C. And notice where the teardrop cursor is. All right, the next part is a quarter rest. Okay, and this is already a quarter rest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my teardrop cursor over to the right, one count. Oh, come on. Um, and the way I move the teardrop cursor was I use the arrow keys on my keyboard, okay, to move the teardrop around. You can also click as well. Click into the staff to move the teardrop cursor. All right, the next note is a D, quarter note. Quarter note is selected, and here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and by the, also with your arrow keys, you can Adjust the notes using the up and down arrows. Adjust the pitches. Um, okay. All right. So we're running into a problem here in measure seven. Okay. Um, we need to add more measures. So my teardrop cursor is here, meaning whatever I do it gets affected here or after. I'm going to go to measure tools and then click insert measure after. Okay, and I can actually keep inserting more measures. And I think that should take care of the rest of the song. All right, that's all we'll need. Mm, let me remove a measure. There we go. Oops. Undo. Let me remove a measure. Okay. So what you just saw there was my cursor was under one of these rests or notes here. And then I clicked remove measure. And because the cursor was there, I lost these notes. Now I made a mistake, so I just hit Command Z or Undo, all right, to bring it back. Okay. All right, so we've got all of our measures set up now. Let's continue finishing measure seven, eight, and nine. The next note is an eighth note, E. I'm going to go to my notes, click eighth note, and pre uh, press or click the E into the staff. This is already an eighth rest. Okay, I'm gonna put in F sharp, so I'm gonna move my cursor over, my blue teardrop cursor, move it over, click on eighth note, F sharp. This is already an eighth rest, move my cursor over, click eighth note, G. Same thing, move the cur blue cursor over, and click it in. All right, this is already an eighth rest, I don't need to make any changes here. Move the blue teardrop cursor over. Okay, the next thing we have are dotted notes, dotted quarter notes. Okay, so a dotted quarter, adding a dotted quarter note is a two-step process. So first, I need to put this B in. So I'm going to go to my note tools, click on quarter note, and click B into the staff. All right. Now, to make that a dotted quarter note, I'll, I'll move my blue teardrop cursor over underneath the note. 
Okay. Once the teardrop cursor is under my quarter note here, which is B, I'm going to go to my note tools, click on the dot, and click on dot. Okay. There's this other one called double dots. Don't click that one. Just go to single dot. All right. So now there's my B dotted quarter note. Next is my B eighth note. So I'm going to move my cursor over because I want my eighth note to go here. Oops. Yeah, B. The next one is going to be C half note. Move my cursor over. Click C. All right. Um, actually, we made a huge mistake again. Go over here for measure seven. There is a key signature change. Okay. We went from one sharp to no sharps, no flats. Okay, so how do we change this? All right, so since we want to affect the key signature change right here in measure seven, all right, I'm going to move the cursor over here. I just clicked on the C, by the way. So this measure, we want this measure to be affected by the key signature change. All right, so let's see what happens. Click on measure up here, key signature, and let's click on um, no sharps, no flats. All right, there we go. All right, there's no sharps, no flats now in measure seven. All right, Whew, that was a save. Okay, now we got to keep on going. Now, because we changed the key signature to no sharps, no flats, or natural, um, it, ch it kept this F sharp that we had over here. So we need to change this F sharp to an F natural. Because if you look in our PDF, that right here is F natural. All right, so let's change this to F natural. Let's move our teardrop cursor over here. All right, let's go to our note tools and then click on natural. And it goes away, it's F or F natural. All right. Okay, next is after this dotted quarter note, let's move down here. So I'm going to move my teardrop cursor down here. Let's look at the very left side. We have a time signature change. We're changing to 3-4 time. Okay, so I'm going to go to Measure Tools. Make sure my blue cursor, teardrop cursor is here for Measure 10. Click on Time Signature and click on 3-4. And there you go, 3-4 time in Measure 10. Okay, let's keep adding more notes. All right, so we want to click in a dotted quarter note C. So I'm going to click C in the staff first. To make it dotted quarter note, I'm going to move the blue teardrop cursor over underneath, underneath the note so I can dot that note. If I have the teardrop cursor somewhere else, I'm going to dot something else, and we don't want to do that. So we are, our teardrop cursor is under the C. Oh, we're in note tools. Click on the dot menu and click on single dot. And there you go. Now it's a dotted quarter note C. Let's move the teardrop over to the right underneath this eighth rest because we're going to put a B eighth note. Next is a G quarter note. So note tools, quarter note, G. Oh, I'm sorry, A. I'm not used to reading alto clef. All right. We have more quarter notes. So this is easy. This is G, F, and E. Oops. All right. Next, we have a D dotted quarter note. So I'm going to click D into the staff. Move that teardrop cursor over. Click dot. And now we have a D dotted quarter note. Next note's an eighth note. Eighth note C. And then quarter note C, click quarter note, click C. And then the last note is a dotted half note um, C. Sorry, I've been reading the notes wrong. This is D, C, D, C. I keep reading it in treble clef. All right, so D, C, D, 
and that last note's a dotted half note. So I'm going to click half note first, insert the dotted, insert the half note. Okay. Now, because we want this half note to be uh, a dotted half note, move the teardrop cursor over, click on dot, and now you have a dotted half note C. All right. So that was, this is a majority of your work in flat.io is pitches and rhythms. Okay. You're going to be spending most of your time here. The next thing we need to do is put in repeats. Now, there aren't any repeats here in flat dot in the PDF, so you're not required to put them in. If you'd like to put a repeat into the um, into your flat.io assignment, go for it. You're not going to get penalized for it. So uh, we need to do a repeat. Um, so how do you do a repeat? Well, first, where do you want to put the repeat? OK, so I want to do I want to put my repeat right here. Okay, I want to put my repeat here in this measure. So I put my teardrop cursor there. Click on measure tools and click on left repeat. Okay, and then I want to put a repeat sign at the very end of the song. Okay, so I move my teardrop cursor underneath this note for this measure and click on right repeat. And now the last two measures will repeat okay so that's how you put repeats wherever you want to put the repeat is where you put um, is where, where you put the teardrop cursor first all right if the teardrop cursor was somewhere else and I click right repeat okay it affects that measure and we don't want that okay all right so let me get rid of these repeat signs because they're not required to put them in I just needed to teach you how to put a repeat in Okay, so uh, the next part we're going to do is dynamic symbols. Dynamic symbols, okay, so let's go to your dynamic menu up here. Your dynamic symbols are your mezzo forte, forte, piano, your volume symbols up here. And then your volume styles are up here. And then your crescendo and decrescendo or diminuendo is up here. All right, so let's first put in dynamic symbols. Now we only have two in the PDF that I provided. Okay, forte here piano here so how do you put that in okay well first move your cursor move your cursor to where you need it click on dynamic okay and then click on piano and piano shows up next we want our forte to be over here uh, underneath this high B so I'm gonna move my cursor over here click on dynamic and click on forte all right, so that's the those are your dynamics. That's all we needed to put in. After dynamics, okay, we have our crescendo diminuendo. Okay, so we only have a crescendo in the PDF that I gave you guys. So to do that, we need to move the cursor to where we want to start the crescendo. Okay, let's put it right here. Click on dynamic and then click on crescendo. All right, now we want this crescendo to go as close to the piano as possible. So what you can do is move the teardrop cursor out of the way, click on dynamic, select the dynamic, and then you'll notice that there's these green, these uh, circles, these circles show up next to the crescendo sign. Those are handles. If you click on it, okay, if you click on those handles, you can adjust the length of the crescendo. So let me bring it close to the piano here. All right, and there you go. That's your crescendo. How do you add a diminuendo? Okay, let me put a diminuendo here. Not required, but let me just show you how to do that. Okay, teardrop cursor is here, so that means the diminuendo is going to start in this measure. All right, and there you go. Same thing. It has handles, those circles at the ends, um, to adjust the length and the width of the the width of the crescendo. You don't need to have a diminuendo, by the way. Okay, so take care of that. All right, after diminuendos, uh, crescendo diminuendo is articulations. All right, so let's look at our articulation menu. Your articulation menu is where you could put in um, staccatos, up bows, down bows, fermatas, accents, bow lifts. They call it breath marks here. All right, so. Let's do articulations first. I have a uh, I have a segment here in the workflow for bow directions, so we'll do that second. 
even though bow direction markings are under the articulation category. So let's do articulations first. We have staccatos here in measure six and then accents here in measure nine. So let's throw those in. So we need to go to measure six and add four and add staccatos in each note. Let's move the cursor over here to measure six. Okay. And then all you have to do is now that you have the cursor here, go to your articulation menu and click on staccato. All right, I'm going to move the cursor over to the next note because the cursor, the blue teardrop cursor over to the next note so I can click on staccato. Staccato, move the cursor over, staccato. All right, so that's how you add staccatos. All right, make sure the teardrop cursor is there, you're on articulation, and then click staccato. The next area there where there's other articulations are here on the accents. Okay, so we have an accent here on the over the B's and the C. So I'm going to move my teardrop cursor over here. Go to articulation and then click on accent. Okay. I can also do that by clicking around, clicking into the note, and then the teardrop cursor moves. Okay, so that's articulation. The next part is bow direction markings. Okay, that's under your articulation category. Move the cursor over, the teardrop, and then click on, where is it? Down bow. The next one is over here. This is an up bow, and this is a down bow. So I'm gonna go up here to this high, high D. Hit up bow. Move the cursor over and then click down bow. All right, pretty cool. Next line, we have a down bow here, measure three. Move the cursor over, down bow. Um, measure three, beat three, this B right here. Measure four, the first note, it's a down bow. Measure five, the first note's an up bow. Okay, and then that's it. Those are our those are our up bow, down bow symbols, our symbols that we gotta put into our music. All right, so after bow direction markings, the next one is slurs. Now putting in slurs is very similar to um, putting in crescendo signs, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our dynamic tools here so that we're ready to put, oh no, sorry. Um, we're going to go to articulation tools here so that we're ready to put in our slurs. Okay, so we want our first slur to be here between the G and the A in measure three. So I'm going to move our teardrop over here because it's going to put start the slur on this beat and click on slur up here. All right, let me try that again. Our cursor is set. Go to articulation tool and then click slur. Okay. Same thing with the slurs. The slurs have these circle handles. Click on that to slur longer things, but we just need to slur to the next note. And by the way, uh, flat.io automatically slurs to the next note when you slur, okay? Move our cursor over. I used my keyboard arrow keys to move the cursor over because we're gonna put a slur over here. Make sure we're in articulation tools and click slur. All right. Now, the weird thing here is the slur is weird. It's underneath the C. Okay, so flat.io has its quirks. This is the real way to make a slur when you go from B to C, but it's doing this in flat.io, okay? So, yes, I can move the slur above the staff, but it's not going to go when you it's not going to do it over here. So, if it looks like that, it, that's fine. Next, we need to slur four notes. So I'm going to move my cursor over, click slur. All right, and then same thing. The slur sign is a little bit different than mine, okay? But no matter what, it's still a slur, okay? Click the handle here and go all the way to the G. All right, so that's how it's going to look for you, okay? And then the last one, we need to put a slur here between G and D. So set my teardrop cursor underneath this high G. and then click slur. We need to adjust the slur. Oh, what happened to it? Oh, it was thinking. 
All right, it was stalling a little bit. That's weird. And there we go. Again, your slur and your bow direction marking are going to look way different than mine. All right. Okay, so we're done putting in all the elements. Now it's time to save and print your work. Okay, uh, so you're going to go to your document tools. Okay, again, if your document tools are not here, they're up here on the upper right. Okay, anyways, click on document tools and we want to find this logo here for printing. So click on the print icon and then click start printing. Your printer dialog box for your computer should show up. Okay, and on a Mac, you on a Macintosh or Apple uh, it has different destinations. So you're going to want to save it as a PDF. Okay, and you're going to want to find the file where the PDF gets saved. Mine always go to the desktop. So you can from here, I can save it as a PDF. I can send it straight to my printer because this is my printer up here. Or I can save it to my Google Drive and then um, using Google Drive, um, share the link with me so that um, I can view your assignment. Okay, so this is how you save. Um, this is one of the ways you can save by going to this printer icon here. Another way to save is to click on this cloud with the down arrow and then click on printable PDF. Okay, so um, click on that. Merge rest and measures. Okay, anyways, we don't need that. So I'm just gonna click this off. These other symbols right here, um, these other symbols right here um, are for the premium features. So, and then you click export. And then down here, I don't know if you saw it, but down here now my file is getting saved into my desktop. Okay, now I have a PDF and what you could do is you could drag, oops, sorry. You could drag that PDF over to your email um, and send that as a file attachment to me or um, use that PDF to save it into your Schoology. All right, so that's how you print and save your work. So let me see what happened here. All right, and there is the music that we just made. Okay, now it's saying up here, score created with the free version. That's the watermark that gets put into your um, documents because you're using the free version. If you're not using a free version and you paid for it, you won't see this. All right, so let's get out of here. All right, so we, you guys are done. All right, congratulations. And um, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, so I love using music notation software. Um, it has helped me out so much in understanding and learning rhythms when I was younger. I used to have a really old computer, and um, I remember, you know, we were able to put in music notation software and connect it to my electric piano that I used to have. So, um, and, you know, what I liked about music notation software was I can click the notes in, and then there was this playback feature. So you can play back your your stuff okay so let's play back um this um piece that we wrote okay turn on the metronome let's make this louder oops okay and then click on the play button Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. The reason why it started from here is because that's where the teardrop cursor is. So let's move the let's move the teardrop cursor over to the beginning so that we can hear it from the beginning. That teardrop cursor is very important.
And that's what this sounds like, okay? So um, let's pretend this was a sheet of music in your orchestra class, and you're like, okay, I need to practice. Now you have something to play along with. You have a kind of like um, a, a partner to play along with. It stays in time. It's got a metronome. This doesn't rush or drag, and it plays everything in tune with, uh, and it plays everything in tune. It's not going to play out of tune because it's all electronic. Um, so I remember practicing along with this kind of stuff. I would go home from school, come back from, you know, band class and then look through my music and go, you know what, this measure always messes me up. Uh, I'm going to throw these notes into my music notation software and play it back. And now I had kind of like a teacher, uh, a personal private teacher to help me learn how to play my music. Okay. It's kind of like if you don't know how to read a word on, in a book. And then like, and, and a teacher comes in or your parents come in and they read that word for you and you go, oh, that's how it sounds. That's how you pronounce it, you know? So this is kind of the same way. This is like a, this is like a model. Now the sounds are a little bit cheesy, um, but I mean, that's what you get for playing um, something for free, using something for free. And then, um, and then you have, uh, you know, electronic sounds. So um, I love music notation software. I've always... Um, even into college or, you know, I'd get I'd get some music and some stuff was really difficult. I'd plug it into the music notation program. All right. So that is flat.io. Um, and, you know, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or in the discussion forum in Schoology. You can type in your issues there um, and, you know, somebody should be able to answer. Um, OK. And um, or send me a message or leave a comment in the this in the comment section below all right so um good luck with this make sure you submit this to me through our district email good luck with this um, and happy practicing